Um, we're going to, s- this is like the last teaching of the emotions um, today. So, have you been enjoying the series so far? All right. So, um, and today you'll be able to ask some questions. Um, don't forget, we'll use this Lido app. So, you'll be able to ask some questions, totally anonymous. Nobody will know is you. So, please ask me anything relating to what we've been sharing all month long. Praise God. So that that way, I will not just be talking to you. I can get a feedback of of what you are thinking. Your question will be totally anonymous. Nobody will know is you sending it, okay? Don't forget that. All right, so let me just try and tidy up some things, then we would um, go to the Q&A. So we established that your emotions are very important, and the whole essence of the series is to help you become a bit more aware about how important your emotions are and how it is currently affecting your outcome. Your emotions are currently, at this time, affecting your outcome. Praise God. Have you noticed that there is, there is really no completely useless person? We just have people that have not really learned how to channel their emotions. That's what we have. People that have not really learned how to channel their emotions. So I, I was saying that if you are overweight, you're already consistent. If you are, um, if you're a gossip, you're already resourceful. If you are a thief, you're already creative. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that all the things that make somebody have a negative outcome in themselves, those qualities are good qualities. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you're overweight, you're consistent with overeating or oversleeping or something like that. You're consistent with it. I'm not talking about people that have a medical condition. I mean, people that their own overweight is purely food-based. Praise God. I used to be one of the captains of that class. <laughs> Nowadays, when young couples marry newly, I'm the first to warn them, don't start eating anyhow. Because I married a woman that can cook. And as a single man for many years, you now marry somebody that likes to cook. And now knows how to cook. Ah, we wound ourselves. <laughs> she was rolling out the food. I was finishing it. I'm telling you. All kinds of things. And she, she, she likes to cook. She's creative with cooking. She knows how to cook. Yum and vegetable sauce. Pow! <laughs> we just come out with liver, boiled egg, dry fish. Different things contesting for election. <laughs> in the vegetable stew. Ah, so I eat round one and say bring round two. Sometimes round three. <laughs> uh, I'm still paying for <laughs> all those frivolities. I'm still paying for it now. Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you are overweight, you are consistent. You have a good attribute. You just have to now channel your emotions so that you can change your consistency to something else. If you are muscular, you know, put a half muscle. If you are muscular, you are incredibly consistent and disciplined. Do you know the kind of discipline it takes to build muscles? You must go to gym every day or every other day, and even some days you don't feel like you still go to build muscle. I'm not talking about people going for Mr. Waldo. I mean, people just building muscle for at home. <laughs> just to look at mirror. So you know what I told them in the other church yesterday? I said, if you are muscular and you are not rich, paste your account balance on that mirror. <laughs> so anytime you go and look at your muscle, you can see other areas you need to apply discipline. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you are muscular, every area of your life should be okay because you have the qualities to make it. And if you get what I'm saying, if you can apply that same discipline to studying the Bible, to read, to prayer, to research, to marketing, to whatever you do in your field, you will make it. What I'm saying is that there is no useless person. If you're a gossip, you are resourceful. You are resourceful. The whole CNN that have how many thousand staff? To bring news. You, you are chattering news. Oh, one man army. One man CNN. Just that you don't take advertisement. <laughs> CNN takes advert to get money. You, you are giving news. Free. You are 
resourceful. You are not lazy. You are not lazy. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. You just need to channel your emotions right. If you are a thief, you are walking. Just that you are walking the wrong walk. But you are walking. To be an armor is easy. You have to research. You have to get information dissemination. Dissemination. You have to get intel. You have to profile. You know profiling? That means you must look at the crowd and know who you should follow. Who you can pick their pocket. The worst thing that can happen to Amrabah is to follow somebody, go and rob him and find that he has nothing. <laughs> you have robbed yourself. You find that he has no money. So you can't go and pick pocket somebody that doesn't have anything in his pocket. That's profiling. One of my, <laughs> one of my friends used to be a cult boy. So he always used to carry a knife with him. You know, cult boys are ready to fight anywhere. So he was a good friend. So he always carries a knife. Somebody wanted to pick his pocket. Next thing we hear is, yeah, yeah. Well, he has put hand where knife, his knife had cut him. That's, that, to be a robber is not easy. You have to profile the pocket you want to pick. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So you are walking. All I'm saying is that you see, if you can channel your emotions into the right things that will bring you the right outcome, you can succeed at anything. And that's what this is about. For you to begin to notice the place of your emotions. Your emotions are constantly pushing you. Your emotions are so powerful. When you get emotional about something, and this is what happens to many people, they don't realize. When you get emotional about something, it sends signals to your mind. Your mind begins to churn out reasons why that thing is good. Let me explain to you. Women will understand this one. You go to a shop, or you are passing somewhere. You don't have money. You are not applying to shop. You now see one bag. And you fall in love with the bag. Or you get emotional about the bag. The moment your feelings follow that bag, your feelings will send that signal to your mind, your mind will start churning out strong reasons why you must buy that bag. Even though when you left home, you knew you shouldn't be buying another bag. The ones you have, you have not used. But your mind will start churning out. Your mind is strictly obeying your feelings. Start telling you this bag, you know, this color matches with that shoe. And you know it's not common, it's not easy to find it. This time, this is the last one you will ever see in this life. They have stopped making this color for now. And it's even cheap. The price is very good. This is on sale. All you need to do is to deposit the, 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 the 10 naira with you. Then spread, you know, your mind will start coming up with reasons. And you see the same way, if you hit that bag and you send that information to your mind, your mind will start coming up with excuses. Why you don't need this bag? Same way. And to you, you wouldn't know that it's just responding to your feelings. You would think this is logic. You would think this makes sense. Do you know the people that hate other people of other color, they, they have, they are, as long as they emotion, like for instance, if a white person emotionally hates a black person, that feeling sends signals to his mind why white should not relate with black. And it will be strong reasons to him. And if you are getting what I'm saying. Same thing with the guy that steals. Because you see that you see Yahoo Yahoo guys today defending Yahoo. They are not joking, they are serious. Because that that's the, it, the emotions has gone to their mind. It is churning out strong reasons why they should do what they are doing. The moment they change how they feel, they will also change how they think. And it will go back and also change how they feel again. So it's back and forth like that. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So you need to start noticing how you feel about things. That is why we have the Holy Spirit. That is why we have the word of God. We need to allow the word of God determine how we feel. Once the word of God becomes your standard, it controls your feeling. So that way, even when you don't feel like certain things, you still go ahead and do what the Bible says so that until your feelings follows you. Somebody gets what I'm saying? So this person annoys me. The Bible said I should forgive him. Now, I don't have to feel like forgiving him. But the Bible has already made it clear what the right thing for me to do is. What, what, many people confuse forgiveness with the feeling of forgiveness. No, they are two different things. Forgiveness and feeling like forgiving are two different things. The Bible never said feel like forgiving. There's no such scripture that thou shalt feel like forgiving a neighbor. No, he said thou shalt forgive whether you feel like it or not. Until you master, sometimes you need to forgive the person even when you don't feel like. Just go ahead and still forgive. That's the right thing to do. Because your feelings are so fickle, if you obey them, the end result, you might not like it. 
So the Bible has set the standard in the way that the end result will favor you. Even though the present feelings doesn't favor you. See the story of Elijah. Elijah in the Bible. You know the popular story. He just finished calling down fire from heaven. He was, it was a great time of ministry. Heavy ministration. He killed many prophets of Baal. Called down raw fire. He was, he had poured out everything he had. He was already tired and drained. And when he finished that powerful ministration, Jezebel sent a message to him and said, you killed all the prophets of Baal that by this time tomorrow, God will punish me if I don't kill you too. If I don't do the same thing to you. And because he was already at a state where he was tired, like we said during this teaching, you must understand that sometimes the way you are reacting to issues is based on how your day has been. It's based on whether you are tired or not. So sometimes you must try not to make very important decisions when you are stressed. Because if not, you make a permanent decision based on a temporary feeling. And many people have done that. They've made permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. It happened to Elijah. He was so tired. When they threatened him, he said, I'm going to die. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to commit suicide. He said, I'm the only one serving God. Every other person has denied God. He kept insisting he wanted to die. God tried to encourage him. Tried to get him to rest. All Elijah needed was to rest. Have a proper sleep for like one week. Wake up, pray, read the Bible, watch Netflix. <laughs> sleep again. Wake up, eat. Watch Netflix. <laughs> Wake up, sleep. He needed to do that for a couple of days. Then he will get himself. Then he will be able to make sound judgment. But instead, he made a permanent decision based on a temporary feeling. He just said, I'm not doing it again. He said, I'm the only one left. God said, I have about 7,000 or whatever people. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was not true. What he was feeling was real, but it was not true. That happens to many, many, I, I can't count how many people have given up on their dreams because they felt tired. It's okay to feel tired. Especially if you're in this Nigeria, many times you will feel tired. But don't give up. Are you here, somebody? Let me tell you, but don't give up. That is why, that is why there's so much benefits in having good friendships. If Elijah was married, it would have been easier. If he had a woman to rub his head that day. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's why it's good to be married and married to a, to the, to a good person. If he was married, because he was, he was dejected, drained, lonely, tired. If he had somebody that would just tell him, look, you are a great man of God. Look, you can't say you're the only one left. Your preaching has been impacting people. So there are some people left that you have impacted. That didn't you notice just a few, just yesterday, you called down fire from heaven. It's still you. Don't answer anybody. Jezebel can't do nothing. Worst case, we'll call fire again here. I get what I'm saying. You'll be amazed how little encouragement can go a long way. You know what the Bible says? It said two are better than one. They should have a good reward for their labor. He said, if one, if one, said, said, if, if, if one should fall, the other will raise him up. He said, woe to him that is alone when he falls. That's what happened to Elijah. Nobody to encourage him. He said, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they would fall, the one will do what? Lift up his fellow. But what to him that is what? Alone when he falls. He said, for he had not another to do what? Help him out. This is why you must be active in church. Don't answer those people that are saying church is in the heart. We don't need church again. Everybody should go to their house. Serve God from the internet. That's nonsense. It's, <laughs> it's a plan from the pit of hell. We need one another. When we gather together like this, if you are strong, we need your strength. If you are weak, come with your weakness. There's somebody strong that will strengthen you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. So what we do every day when we come, we exchange strength. Some days you come weak. Some days you come strong. Some days you are the one encouraging somebody. Some days you are the one receiving encouragement. Hallelujah. That's God's design for all of us to make it to the end. When you run alone, the day you are tired... And it's only you that, you that is that is there to advise you. And you are tired. Guess what the advice will be? Quit. I never get what I'm saying. If you are tired and the only person to consult, whether to continue or not, is you, the advice will be very simple. Quit. But if there's somebody else there that is stronger than you at that time, 
he will talk sense to you and you'll be amazed. The way your emotions work, once it is exposed to a better truth, it changes direction. That's all that happens. If Elijah had a wife or had a ministry partner that would tell him, look man, we, we can do this. Let's not give up now. He would have made it. That's how God designed the church to operate. That's why in Hebrews, he says, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some people are. He said, so that we can encourage ourselves as we see the day. Look at it here. Okay, give me NIV. Give me NIV. It says, um, it says, uh, look at this. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. As, as we are here now, when service, some people are at home. Just sleeping. After you go through the wall of Lagos, the wall of Nigeria, you just go home like that with that frustration. Is what you go and use to advise yourself. You have to be around other believers. As you worship and pray, your spirit gets lifted again. Somebody get what I'm saying? Let's read it. He said, don't, don't, don't give up on meeting together as some in, are in the habit of doing, but doing what? Encouraging one another and all the more as you see what? The day of. They are saying, because we are seeing the day approaching, we are all going together. If anybody gets tired on the journey, we will encourage him. And we all keep going. So that that way, all of us will make it to the end. Because there are many people that start this race and don't finish it. There are many people that have become born again at some time. Some of you even know some people. They were born again maybe in secondary school. They were born again maybe in university. And you meet them again now, they are totally born against. Have you met people like that? So, just because you are here today, doesn't mean 10 years from now you'll still be here. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. But you see, when you are properly surrounded by other believers, even if you want to backslide, they will let you backslide. Because we're all locked in together. We're all holding our hands together. When anybody's weak, the stronger people around them will carry them up. That's how God designed it. So surround yourself with positive people. It it matters in your emotional well-being. It matters in the outcome of your life. My my travel agent, I, I've, I've had many travel agents over the years. Because I travel a lot. I've been traveling for a while. So my, my current travel agent is actually the best I've had, I've had in all my travel time. She's great. She gives me good prices. She allows us spread payment. So I don't have to pay everything at once till sometime. You know, so the benefits were just, she, was just she, she has been the best so far. Hard working. You can call her in time of the day. She's willing to answer you and work. She has been our best. But recently... She ran into some um, business trouble with her partners, blah, blah, blah. She sure was owing them millions of naira, maybe about 30 or 40 million or whatever. She had big issues. Sure. So they, they started canceling tickets she has bought for people. So it means she was owing the partners and also owing the customers. So everybody was looking for her. Where's our ticket? This, this, this. So she finally had to switch off her phone and go a war Because everybody was looking for her, for their ticket that they can't find. So I've been trying to reach her. I couldn't reach her. So, but I've been sending that message. I said, look, I'm not even trying to reach you to ask for my tickets you are owing me. I'm trying to reach you to know how you're doing and how we can help you resolve these issues. So later she picked my call and we spoke. And I began to tell her, she said she had given up on the business. She's no more doing again. She wants to go and look for a job and do something else. She's not doing this travel thing again. And I began to encourage her. I said, look, I've been traveling for many years and I've had many agents. You are the best agent I've ever had. You are actually good at this job. And don't worry about the money you're owing. I said, oh, all these big business we are seeing, they've all lost money at one time or the other. Any big business we are seeing, if he tells you how much he has lost, you will cry for him. I said, so don't give up. This is normal in business. This is how business goes. I began to encourage her and give her positive energy. I said, look, some of the customers you have are big people. They can help you. Don't, 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 don't cut off from them. Instead, keep them abreast of what is going on. Some of them are strong people that can actually help you overcome what you're facing. So don't run from them. Talk to them. You know, I began to give her positive. She began to cry profusely on the phone because she had not received that kind of encouragement since the, since the trouble started. I get what I'm saying? Now, this is the same person that was avoiding me. I'm just going to tell you that you, your emotions can greatly change just by getting somebody that will speak life into what you are facing. That your position that you think is all over. You are dead and buried. Hallelujah. Thank you for the three people clapping there. <laughs> Praise God. That your situation that you think is over, you are dead and buried. All you need is one person that will tell you, look, I used to be where you are. Or I've seen this thing before. You are not dead and buried. You might be down, but you are not out. That the righteous fall seven times and rise again. And that you are going to rise again. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's all you need. That's all Elijah needed that day. His ministry shouldn't have ended. And some of you don't understand that God is not a, is not a soldier. 
If you say you're not doing it again, it will answer you. Because it can't force you. You have free will. It wasn't time for Elijah to quit. Elijah just insisted he wanted to quit. And God said, okay, have your way. Elijah says, fine. And there are many human beings like that. You have quit on dreams God gave you because there was nobody. You have quit on marriages, quit on dreams, quit on things because there was nobody on businesses because there was nobody around you at that time to give you positive energy. Somebody get what I'm saying? It makes a world of difference. Makes a world of difference. Having somebody there to, to stir you up. Your emotions will just change. Fresh life will come into you. Say there is hope for a tree if you be cut down. That it can yet grow again. Say, especially when it's being watered and watered. Say it will grow again. There's hope for a tree if it be cut down. Hallelujah. Okay. So, understand some of those things. Channel your emotions. Some of you, the things that... Check what you're passionate about. Check what you hate. Hate, too, is an emotion. Hate is only bad when you hate human beings. But when you hate injustice, it's a good thing. When you hate imbalance, when you hate unfair treatment, when you hate sickness, when you hate failure, you need to use, get your emotions, you know, let it direct you. What do you hate? Today, I'm, 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 I'm a bit popular in teaching relationships. It, 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 I didn't choose to teach relationships. Relationships chose me. I was just passionate about it. What do you hate? I hate that people making a mess of their relationship. What do you hate? You hate injustice. You hate sickness. You hate poverty. You hate unemployment. What do you hate? It's a pointer sometimes to the purpose of God on your life. Because that emotion is a foil. The person that is not emotional about their dream will get tired easily. He will quit easily. What do you hate? What do you hate? Or what do you love? It's a pointer to what God is calling you to do. Hallelujah. And like I said on Sunday, your mind doesn't work on its own. Your mind, I mean your emotions doesn't work on its own. It operates based on what you focus your mind on. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says when any man is tempted, he should not say that he's tempted of God. That God cannot tempt any man, neither can he be tempted by any man. He now said, we are all tempted when we are drawn away of our own lust. What they're saying is that the lust is your own. It's something you have entertained. What are you entertaining with your thought life? It will affect how you feel. What are you enter? If you're, if you're, if you're always entertaining sexual content, sexual thoughts, you will always be in a sexual mood. It's as simple as ABC. If you're always thinking about food, you will always be hungry. Are you getting what I'm saying? You eat more when you are bored. Because you have nothing to do. You start thinking of anything that is pleasurable. And food, come. I, that's why I do next is the devil's workshop. Once you are idle, you start looking for anything. What do you entertain? It's your own lust that the Satan will use to draw you away. Hallelujah. Every man is drawn away of his own what? Lust. What are you thinking about? And lastly, in closing before I start taking Q&A, what are you dwelling on? What are you dwelling on? See, let me tell you something. I don't know what's frustrating you now, but look, one of the things you can do is to channel your focus Away from that thing. Everything becomes easier when you channel your focus. Let me give you an example. I used to hate traffic. Um, those days when I was dating my wife, when, when we first started dating, she lives in Suleri. I lived in Festac. And um, there's, there are some spots that used to have traffic. When I go and visit her on my way back home, there are some spots that used to have traffic then. Sometimes it's my two, sometimes some other places. So those days going to visit her, I used to say, oh, there should, there should not be traffic today. But you see, that was because I was focusing on the traffic. After a while, I started using the time I spent on the road as a time to listen to messages. So, and most messages then, it just take about one hour. So, anytime my journey is even less than one hour, it will not be paining me. I get what I'm saying. Because I shifted my focus from the traffic to what I could do in that time. The same thing applies. If you focus on what's paining you, it will look bigger. Try to turn that thing to something positive. All the time you spend in Nigerian traffic, you can use it to actually get a degree. I'm telling you, you can get an online course. You can be chartered or certified in something that will be useful in your career. All the, calculate it. All the time you say, this is my traffic time, it's my school time. I want to be certified so and so and so. I want to research so and so. Once you hit that traffic, you are like at work. 
your second work. If your first work is not paying you enough, start preparing for your second work. Research. Get certifications. Get, get some information. Use that time wisely. You'll find that you won't mind even being in traffic for three hours. You won't mind. But you see, if you focus on traffic and you're in traffic for three hours, that will be one of the most dreadful three hours of your life. Especially if you have to do it every day. You are just frustrating yourself. And you are affecting your own health. Because you are not only being stressed physically, you are also being stressed emotionally and mentally. Somebody getting what I'm saying? Turn that thing to something good. I was at the airport. We, me and my wife, we, we traveled and we just got back one time. And we're at the airport. You know, I know how it is. Those of you that have traveled abroad before, depression attacks you from Nigeria airport. I'm telling you, if you've ever traveled abroad, because when you're abroad, you, you forget where you're coming from. Where you're abroad, you are, wherever you have gone to, if it's, if it's really abroad, though, I don't mean Ghana, uncle. I mean really abroad. <laughs> I'm joking. For my Ghanaian fans, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, so I have a lot of Ghanaian fans. So on my Instagram, Ghana is the second largest African country following me. So, so um, when you travel like abroad, you know, you, you forget where you're coming from because there, there'll be 24 hours light. Um, you know, you see police and you're not afraid. You actually greet them. You know, like in Nigeria, you see police, you don't know what can, anything can go wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you because they can just <laughs> stop you for anything. You know, so you, have, you know, you iron anytime you like. You, you're just flexing. And by the time you enter plane and you're landing back, you know, and by the time you're at the airport there, everything is working well. No Agbe Rose at the airport. You just go, you check it. Only one person stamps you at the airport there. Only one person attends to you, stamps you, everything. You are... By the time you land Nigeria, boah, first thing, no light. Everywhere is hot. Then, the, of course, the escalator is not working. Many things. So depression attacks you. So we landed like that one of those times. And um, there was now a long queue to go and to, to stamp and enter. And I'm wondering, why is this queue not moving? It was long, unnecessarily long queue. And, it was, and the place was hot. So it was getting for, I was getting annoyed. I was already fuming. Which kind of country is this one? What's happening? In the midst of that, and it, the queue was long queue. That means I would have been in this mood all through the long queue. You know, and your bad mood will not move the queue. It's you that will suffer. My wife, at that time, she just said, oh, come and see. She showed me um, her, one of her friend's Instagram page. That one had like 10 different slides that had jokes on it. Very, very funny jokes. As she showed me those things, as I removed my mind from the fact that there, this place is hot and it's a long queue, to the jokes, I lightened up and I forgot the situation. The point is that what are you dwelling on? You see, there is happiness available where there's sadness. If you keep dwelling on the negatives, you will keep bringing out negative outcomes. And sometimes that your negative attitude will not change what you are facing. It's your attitude that needs to change. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Just change your attitude. Don't dwell on the negative. The moment I move my mind from dwelling on these problems to those jokes she was showing me, I began to smile. And laugh. Some of them were crazy funny. I wanted to put it up today, but I didn't have time. I don't have time for that. They are really, really funny, crazy things. You know Nigerian, how we are now? All those savage re response and all that. It was very funny. I was just laughing and I forgot. The, the queue became shorter. Because when you, are, <laughs> when you are in pain and in bad attitude, everything looks longer. I, you know, I get what I'm saying. When you're happier, it kind of reduces the stress. Praise God. So be become more aware of your emotions from today. Become more aware. Don't let it control you. Don't let it get out of hand. Don't let it escalate. By the help of the Holy Spirit, he says he's at work in us both to do and to desire to do is good pleasure. So God is always at work in you. So by prayer and developing your spiritual life, you can gain more control over your emotions. And by that, you can determine how you get more favorable outcome out of your life. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? All right. We'll take a few Q&A from this series so that I can, I can speak specifically to you. Yes. Okay. 
Um, first question. I deal with serious anger issues. I feel like destroying things anytime I'm upset. I don't know how to handle it. Did you hear how well? We can't hear. Okay. My mic is low. Try again. I deal with serious anger issues. I feel like destroying things anytime I'm upset. I don't know how to handle it. All right. Um, you're dealing with anger issues. I think you, you have to start to pray about it and begin to read scriptures that have to do with anger. If you notice, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. So the problem is not just that you are getting angry, it's that you are acting on your anger. So start to, start to pray about it and build your spiritual muscle enough to take over your anger. All of us get angry. There is none of us that doesn't get angry. And the Bible never said for you not to get angry. That's not even possible. Like I said when we started this series. He said, be angry, but he said, but sin not. It would be weird if you are wearing white and a car pass and splash mud on your white cloth and you are smiling. The natural emotion at that place and that point in time is to be what? Angry. You just have to now gain control of your anger so that you will not act it out. All right? Let it become something you pay particular attention. It becomes a project in your life. See, the moment you take notice of it, it's the same way you will build discipline concerning anything. Same way you build discipline. People that are not disciplined financially, it's the same thing. Once you know that you have financial indiscipline, you begin to pay special attention to it. Because, like I said earlier, the person that has financial discipline, what happens is that the moment he sees food, sees shoe, sees cloth, his mind begins to look for logical reasons why he must buy this shoe. If you pay attention to it, even though your mind is giving you 100 reasons, you understand that you are dealing with financial indiscipline and your answer is already what? No. No matter how much your mind is bugging you. And if you're getting what I'm saying. Then get accountability partners to also help you. Let people that will help you manage your anger, keep you accountable in that area. This can apply to any other area of weakness, not just anger. Any other area of weakness. Let there be other people working with you on that project. Pay attention to it. Most times, it seems the anger takes you unaware. When you realize that this anger is a problem, and when it starts rising, you notice it, you will always be able to overcome it. Hallelujah. Once you notice it, that this is an issue, start praying about it, start meditating on scripture, start speaking over it, and whenever you notice it, you know, counter it by behaving the way the Bible wants you to behave, in spite of how you feel. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How do I handle struggling to really pray and study the word? Because I've had too many unmet expectations that are weighing me down. How do you deal with struggling to pray? Is that what you said? Okay, this means that you are waiting to feel like praying. The key is to just pray whether you feel like or not. And like I said earlier, in your own case too, you might need to have prayer partners that will help you build the habit of prayer. Many people don't pray because they don't feel like. They don't understand that you don't have to feel like. That's what we are saying. You, it's easier for you to act your way into feeling than to feel your way into acting. So you, you are waiting to feel like praying. No, just start praying. Even me as a pastor, there are many days I don't feel like praying. What I do is I, I just be praying. And trust me, the first few minutes are as dry as Hamatan. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you see, because I'm a bit experienced, I've known that how I feel right now doesn't matter. In fact, when I was a young Christian, I developed a song for this dry feeling of prayer. I can't sing it because it doesn't sound great, but it was a song that always reminded me that I should not listen to my feelings. So the song goes something like, I don't worship God by feelings, I worship God by faith. Do you understand? So it's a song, it doesn't sound nice, so I can't sing it, but... Well, people... <laughs> if I disgrace myself now, you're not going to go hide. But you understand, I had to develop that song because there were many days I was praying... And I didn't feel anything at all. I didn't feel like I was making contact at all. But the moment I sing that song, 
I remind myself that, look, God is hearing me whether I feel like he's hearing me or not. So I say, I'm not going to depend on feeling. You see, because we are too subject to our feelings, we allow it to control us. I'm praying, I don't feel God. No, we don't, we don't worship God by feelings. We worship God by faith. Somebody get what I'm saying? If you don't feel, just pray the dry prayer like that. God has heard you. Are you here, somebody? We depend too much on our feelings. So just pray, whether you feel like or not. Then if possible, join the prayer group. Get, the, get your prayer, your department or whatever. Pray with people. It will help you develop your own lifestyle of prayer. All right. How does one deal with betrayal and also coming to work with that person you know who has already betrayed you in the past? Ask, ask God for help. You will always have people that will betray you. Ask God for help every time you go there. All right? Differentiate between how you feel and what you need to do. Don't dwell and focus on the heart and the way you feel. All right? How you feel is real, but don't dwell and focus on it. Don't build a mansion around it. Don't build a life around that heart. Say, hmm, see what he did to me. Hmm. And, you go, and you're thinking about it morning after the night. Do your best to remove your mind from there. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you deal with this thing, to help you deal with the pain, to help you behave yourself even when you are hot. Like I said, forgiveness and feeling like forgiving are two different things. You might not feel like, you might not feel like, but do what you need to do. Ask God for help. Ask God to help you pull through. Ask God to help you heal. As you are praying and worshiping at home, pray about it. Release it in worship. God will be healing your heart. Be decreeing that I love so and so. I forgive so and so. Be saying it to your spirit man. And when you get there, do what you need to do. Don't dwell. Don't focus. Most times, we are the ones holding on to the heart. We are holding it tight. We don't want to let it go. Because sometimes, it feels good to feel, you know, hot. It feels good to feel, you know, you are, you, you are, you are offended. Your flesh likes that feeling, to be angry. Let it go and forgive. Because, you know, God has not asked you to do something that he has not done for you. God forgave us before we even asked. Are you here, somebody? So... You two need to practice it and forgive, all right? Sir, I easily lose interest and give up on things. Yes. I might be excited at first, but at some point, I just lose the steam. Yes. What can I do about it? Yes, you need to just build discipline. A lot of us fall into that category. Um, me, I had to notice. Like I said, once you notice, you have made a lot of progress. I used to be like that. I'm, I'm excited about new things. And most human beings are like that. I'm excited about new things. I get tired along the way. Praise God. I had to notice that about my life. That I get excited about new, but I get bored quickly. So, one of the things I, I had to start doing, like I said, once you notice. So, I've trained myself now that even when I'm not in the mood, I must keep going. Because I know it's a thing. It's later. I don't, for you to ask this question, that means you must have noticed too. Even though you have lost interest, later you find out you shouldn't have stopped what you were doing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you know that the regret is on the way. Once you notice it, that hey, just because I don't feel like anymore doesn't mean I should stop. Keep going. Look for ways to motivate yourself. Look for ways to motivate yourself. So put structures in place that can help you. Either through friends or other people. Structures. For instance, the person that has issue with finance and saving... That means you can't depend on yourself to be the one saving your money. You have to put structures, put people that you know that they can help you manage it and it will be beyond your, your own discipline. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. So put the structure. You have noticed it. That's the good thing. So put the structure in place and start building that discipline intentionally that I'm a finisher. Even though I'm not in the mood, I need to finish this thing that I've started. Hallelujah. All right? It's a common challenge. There are many people that never finish what they start. Go ahead. When anyone hurts me, I get over them and move on. I completely cancel them like they never even existed. When anyone loves me? Uh, huh? When someone hurts me. Hurts you, okay. I get over them okay. and I move on. I completely cancel them like they never even existed. All right. I don't feel anything for them again. All right. Is it bad? It's bad. <laughs> um, what, can she, what can they do? You are using that as your own self-defense mechanism. And um, I understand where you're coming from, but it's still not the best way to deal with things because those hearts will still exist. You are just covering them up. You need to actually forgive the person 
all right? It's, it's not going to be immediate sometimes. Sometimes you need time to, to deal with what has happened. But covering it and blanking them is not realistic because sometimes the people that will hurt you might be people still around you or people that you need to still relate with. So um, how you are dealing with it is a popular way people deal with it, but it's not the best way people deal with it. You need to learn to face the issue, forgive the person, you will process the thought, then release it, forgive it, stop dwelling. Most people's problem is that they, they take back the situation, they play it over and over and over. It's like a movie. No, release it. Release it by the help of the Holy Spirit and let it go. And after a while, to get to a stage where you will feel like it never happened. Not that you will forget, you know it happened, but you will feel like it never happened. Your feelings will follow your thoughts after a while. All right. Is it normal for me to have mood swings? What I mean is sometimes I don't feel like relating with anyone. Is it normal? All right. Mood swings. What's happening to you is that your moods right now have the control over you. All of us or many people have mood swings. The difference is that some of us are disciplined. You know, I'm a pastor. Do you think it's every day I feel like coming to church or is every day I feel like smiling to people? No, I don't. I've just built myself over the years to be there for people, whether even when me, I need somebody to be there for me. Sometimes the prayer point somebody's bringing is a joke compared to what I'm facing. It's a joke. And it's crying, you know. Pastor, I've been, I've been, I've been. I said, what happened? Said, we have been married for, for eight months. I'm not pregnant. I mean, I've been married for eight years at that time, and we had no child. And I have to make this person's problem look very important. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. You have to take charge of your emotions. You are just, you know, you are just submitting yourself to your emotions instead of you making your emotions submit to you. By the time you start working in an office, you will learn that. You have a bad day at work. They're not paying you to hear about your bad day at, I mean, at home. When you get here, you have to meet up. You have to step up. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you see people that are controlled by their mood, they are the ones that once they have a bad day at home, when they get to work, they will pass, bring their bad day from home and it will affect the whole work. Then when they have a bad day at work, they will also take that bad day at work to their house. It will affect the mood. No, you are letting emotions control you. You must learn to keep everything where it is. As a pastor, it doesn't matter if I had a bad day at home. When I get here, I will still preach. I will forget anything. I will smile. I will laugh. I will pray for people. I will greet people. I will laugh with them. And I will not think of anything I'm going through. It's about controlling your own emotions. Hallelujah. Controlling it. You, it, it takes discipline. But every human being can get there. Hallelujah. So, like I said, act your way into feeling. Don't, don't submit to your mood. Any, if you are controlled by mood swings, you have lived like that for a long time. So, it's becoming normal. It's not normal. You can still turn it over by learning to do what is right in spite of how you feel. Mm -hmm. My wife left home on trumped allegations and now wants a divorce. How do I handle this change? My pain, forgiveness afterwards if reconciliation happens. Well, you, you need counseling because two of you need to talk. You need to know what the issues really are. But trust me, if you want to forgive, the power of the Holy Spirit is there. Listen. The, the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural ability. Don't be so stuck on how you feel now. Your feelings are real, but they are not final. Go and get the first day. I mentioned that. Your feelings are real. They are not final. You can feel a certain way today, and just by exposing yourself to other truths, you can change how you feel, and both of them will still be real. I get what I'm saying. So you feel hot now. Trust me, by the help of the Holy Spirit, by exposing your mind to other truths, you can get to the stage where you don't feel like this anymore. But you have to be willing to yield yourself to that truth. You have to be willing. All right? Sir, please, how does one control depression? All right, you need to get to... I did a whole series on depression. I want you to get the series. I think it's available on YouTube or it's also available on our website. I did a whole series on it. Um, you need to find out why you are depressed. That's where the whole thing starts from. People get depressed from different reasons. So find out why you are depressed. When you find out the why, then you can start to deal with it, okay? So why are you depressed? That's the first question. Why are you depressed? Are, are, you, are you thinking about yourself too much? Are you thinking about certain situations too much? Because like I told you, your feelings don't operate in isolation. They are usually tied to what is going on in your mind. They are not in isolation. So why are you depressed? That's the first thing. 
I do not believe God anymore. Okay. I experienced a massive loss that I totally did not expect. Mm -hmm. Even in spite of my faith on the issue, I don't know what to do anymore. All right. Um, all of us go through some hard times. Um, the truth is that a lot of people that, are, that go to churches, they think God is just, you know, somebody we use to get ahead. They don't understand that it's actually a relationship. And as long as you are in this life, sometimes bad things can happen. But you see, the story is not yet over. But your attitude looks like you have given up. The story is not over. You're, as long as you are alive, the story is not over. I did a, a message that I titled, that, Can You Allow God Bless You Through Your Trouble? Sometimes when, when the trouble is happening, it looks like, ah, this is the end of life. No, God can turn your situation around. I know that at this stage, it doesn't feel so, but trust me, the God I know, there's nothing he can't turn. Your story can become sweet, so sweet, that you, when you're sharing this thing, you'll be laughing. In fact, a time can come that you'll be so happy that this thing happened. So trust is not only that we are trusting God in good times. Trust is that even when some things don't look good, we trust that this God knows what he's doing. When Joseph went to prison, he had his dream was to be prime minister. The next thing that happened was that he was sold as a slave. From slave, he went to prison. Things were going from bad to worse. So at the end now, we are all sharing his story because of how sweet it is. So don't, don't give up at all. You need to get back to God, settle down with him. You know, see God as being greater than the situation. See God as being greater as, than what you lost. You lost something, but you didn't lose God. God is more valuable than money or anything that you lost. He's more valuable. And he can restore more than double. Job, I mean, did you lose up to Job? You didn't lose anything compared to Job. Job didn't only lose his money. Job lost his family. He lost his children, lost his business, lost his health. And by the time, by the end of the story, they say he got double of everything. So your story is not over. And you have not lost everything yet. You are just exaggerating what you have lost. You trust me, God can turn your story around. And my prayer is that he will turn it around in the name of Jesus. All right. Is emotion connected to the fruits of the Holy Spirit in any way? Yes, they are still connected because most of those fruits of the Spirit are expressed emotionally. So love, peace, they are still, emotion is just simply what you feel. Anything you feel is your emotion. So by the Holy Spirit, we have peace. By the Holy Spirit, we have love. The difference is that when it's the fruit of the Spirit, it is supernaturally being supplied to us. So we are behaving normal. We are behaving well. We are behaving better. Not in our own strength, but by but by the fueling of the Holy Spirit. So yes, it is still linked. They are still one and the same. I'm taking three more. When doing the personality test, why did you ask us to give answers based on our old selves before we got saved? Yes, so that because if you are born again now, sometimes the Holy Spirit has changed some things about you, so you won't get your real temperament if you are feeling your new nature. So we wanted to feel like your old nature. That's how you get the natural tendency you have. What we were after in that test was your natural tendency, not your spiritually or spirit-controlled temperament or tendencies. Because somebody, some people were um, maybe very angry before. Now that the Holy Ghost has worked on them, they are not very kind. If you feel based on the kindness, that's not the natural you. That's the spirit-controlled you, okay? That's why. I have a common habit of having blank emotions. Like majority of the time, I am poker-faced. Am I a psychopath or have I mastered my emotions? You are being mastered by your emotions. You must learn to see. No, have I mastered my emotions? Have you mastered your emotions? No, if you are having blank emotions, that's not good. I mentioned at the beginning that there are two extremes. People that are totally controlled by their emotions and people that totally have no emotions. So that's why you see some people in church or are anywhere, something is going on, they never respond. I don't know if you have seen those people. It might be something funny, they won't laugh. Something exciting, everybody's saying, Woo, hallelujah! You don't... So that's not normal. That's not normal. When, when you are stimulated, there should be a response. Like I said, if water splashes on you and you are laughing, <laughs> that, too, that one too is sickness. <laughs> because the natural reaction at that time should be that you should be upset. You know? So when you're acting out of you know, order like that, that is strange. You see, so there's a put that 
deep worship is going on and they just stand like this. Deep worship. Because they've not learned to yield their emotions. They are constantly trying to cover their emotions. Your emotions, you have to release it. We, we can't be telling God, you're a good, good father and you're just boning your face. When you are saying something that it should involve emotion, let the emotion be released to go along with what you are saying or doing at the time. Praise God. So, you must have started that at your young age when you were hiding your emotions. When I was younger, I used to frown my face. It was because I was shy. Some of you have those mechanisms. So if you are shy, you frown your face. And everybody thinks you are always boning. They don't know that you are just shy. It's only when they talk to you, they find out you are not... What is your, you know, it's not... So it just means you've, you've covered your emotions for some people. is that they, they, they've been ashamed. The people have laughed at them whenever they release their emotions. So have they grow up covering their emotions... They don't, want, they don't want to be vulnerable again. So, learn to yield. Learn to practice flowing with whatever is happening. If people are clapping, clap. If they are dancing, dance. Even if you can't dance so well, check your body, you know. They are worshipping, raise your hand. Learn to release yourself so that you won't totally dampen your emotion. You will need it. Your wife or husband will need it. Your children will need it. You know, our parents always cover their emotions. That's why they, they didn't really hug us, tell us things like, I love you. Because they, they, they train them not to not show emotion. So we, we need to be better. Praise God. All right? Yeah. Two more. How, how do I stop plotting revenge in my heart for someone who offended me? Even though I have forgiven the person, I find that I will still be planning how to get back at him. You are obviously dwelling on that situation. You need to let it go. The, see, the reason why God said not to continue thinking about something it's not just because he wants to monitor your mind. He is saying that because anything you continue thinking about is going to eventually play out. Your mind is so powerful. If you keep thinking about revenge or about any other thing, and you keep thinking about it, eventually circumstances will play out that will allow you to do that thing. So you are putting yourself at risk because very soon you will revenge. And sometimes that revenge can lead you to go to prison or lead you to do something you will regret on the long run. So it will hurt you eventually. So stop playing with that thought. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Push that thought aside. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discipline your thought life. Start putting positive things. This word of God, scriptures, healthy things. They gave us a list on Sunday. What we should think about. Think on these things. So you need discipline with your thought life. That's what you need. All right? Before you do something, you will regret. Uh, I'm trying to find the last one. Okay. If we all keep trying to get distracted from reality, e.g. traffic and things like that, like the example you gave, yeah. then things will keep getting bad. How right. long can we really keep trying to look away from reality? Beautiful. Um, this is a good question. What I was trying to say wasn't that you should run away from reality. Um, there's a popular uh, message I always see, either on WhatsApp sometimes, or even on Instagram, where people say, this Nigeria, prayer is our biggest problem. Have you heard that thing before? Prayer is our biggest... You know, those are massively ignorant people. Nothing is wrong with prayer. In fact, when you say things like that, you are not just insulting prayer, you are insulting the God that said we should pray. God said we should pray because he wants to answer prayer, because prayer is useful. There's nothing wrong with prayer. There's only something wrong when you pray and you refuse to take action. So the problem is laziness, not prayer. I'm saying all this to say this. Um, if you hate injustice, you hate the way Nigeria is, that might be a point that you should do something about it. But just getting angry inside bus and exploding, it's only your health that will be affected by that. I get what I'm saying. So if you are not planning to do something meaningful to help the situation, don't be boiling over nothing. That's what I'm trying to say. I get what I'm saying. So I'm not saying run away from reality or um, don't deal with situations. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying in times where you can't do anything about it, like I'm on a line, there's already first casting. I'm not the first supplier. I'm not the owner of the filling station. I'm not petroleum minister. And I have no intention of doing anything today other than queuing in this first queue. I better be reading my Bible in that queue. Do you understand? And to be honest with you, so for, for those that really um, have ideas and creativity and passion to do things, please do it. Don't be lazy. Move and do something. But if there are cases where you can't do anything, my brother, 
preserve your own uh, health. Even in, um, in, the, in the great countries you are looking at, they have things that frustrate people there. There are more mad people in those places than here. There are more depressed people. Do you know that because of the challenges we have in Nigeria, we, we are even generally emotionally stronger. There's a way everything will be smooth. Small thing will depress you. <laughs> Abroad, if they take light, someone then get traumatized. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because as human beings, we are largely conditioned. We are largely conditioned. If you stay where there's so much problem, a time will come, you won't see problem as a problem. Yes, because you are conditioned. If you stay where there is no problem at all, things that are not problem, you'll be calling it problem. In abroad, they take life for 30 seconds, for 30 minutes. They will send message. They will call medical. Are you okay? Are you traumatized? <laughs> I say, my brother, the whole Nigeria is in trauma. Because we have not had light for three days. And we are surviving. <laughs> Praise God. So they deal with a lot of depression there because little things affect them. Praise God. So, um, whatever you have to deal with, deal with it, you know, with the wisdom of God. There's nothing wrong in addressing Nigeria's issues. If you, if you have the solution, oh yeah, now start. Start. We have many people that, you know, are trying to pass blame. No, if you, if you have the creativity to solve our problems, why are you, you know, sitting here asking questions? You know, go ahead and start something. We're not saying you should uh, not face reality. We need, we need people that can, that can solve these things. Praise God. All of us are laid back. Nobody wants to address it. Let's, let's go ahead and do something. Praise God. All right. Have you been blessed tonight? Come on. Give the Lord a big hand. Glory to God. Let's rise up. Let's take one minute to pray.